bad and the ugly. No, this is not about an old Clint Eastwood Western. It's about the reality that happens in America every day. Uh, you know, and really around the world. Doesn't matter where you live, no one's immune to crime. I don't care what kind of gated community you live in or what kind of fortress you have. It just becomes a bigger target. <laughs> and you can't secure everything that you have. But one of the things though that led up to this video was a lot of the comments once I had made the announcement that my truck had been stolen last week. I got a lot of comments here on Facebook, you know, on Instagram, you know, Such, you know, you need to move. You live, where do you live? You live in a bad place? You live in a bad area? You live in the ghetto? Uh, or uh, just, you're the most unlucky person I've ever known. <laughs> you know, and it's really funny because when I saw that, it really kind of surprised me. So it led me to want to talk about some things about crime and about why we do what we do. What's really astounding is that people that think that crime never happens, I'm not, I don't really understand why they watch this channel, uh, the Sensible Prepper channel or my Suits channel, which is mainly self-defense. Uh, you know, guys, I take self-defense very seriously. I take crime very seriously. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I do what I do on my videos, is we talk about how to be better prepared. So I'm not really sure where those are coming from. If you think that you are immune to crime, uh, we're gonna take the good and bad and ugly and we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna start out with ugly and we're gonna look at bad and then we're gonna end up with the good. And I think that it'll really be something that may help you in a lot of ways. Uh, first off, the ugly. And the ugly truth is, is that here in America today, we live with crime, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, again, nothing is secure. Just like I said in my two is one, one is none video about your bag system. Uh, you know, be prepared to have that bag stolen. It's a great possibility. Uh, you know, many of you, when my truck was stolen, uh, there are 700,000 trucks or vehicles stolen every year in America. Uh, and that's actually from the FBI statistics of 2011, but it gives and takes a little bit here and there, but pretty much that's the case. Uh, houses are broken into. Uh, 2.1 million times a year. Listen guys, if you live to be 70 years old, your chances of a vehicle being stolen, and that's during your driving time, is 20%. You have a 20% chance, one in five chance your truck or car is gonna be stolen. If your home to be burglarized, you have a 110% chance that your house is going to be broken into. Now, there are many houses, especially in lower income areas, that are broken into repeatedly. So not everybody's house is going to be broken into. But the chances of your house being burglarized are actually pretty good in your lifetime. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of crime that happens. These are, I'm not talking about assaults. I'm not talking about people breaking into cars and stealing stuff, which is a really big problem. Uh, but I'm just talking about everyday crime, cars being stolen, houses being broken into. And so these are statistics that you need to keep in mind because what happens is we look at what's happened to us in the past five years. Well, guys, I've not had a house broken into in the past five years. I've not had a car stolen in the past five years. In fact, this is the first car I've ever had stolen at my age. It's the first time my house has been broken into uh, at my age, except when I was a little young child. When I was five years old, we had some teenage kids that broke into our house um, and put Ben Gay in the aquariums and vandalized a little bit and then left. But nothing really even taken. Uh, so, you know, you've got to realize that crime though, over your course of lifetime, is what we're really looking at being prepared. Uh, if you're in a bad area, your chances of those things happening are greater. Uh, but as far as where I live, I live in a very nice area. Uh, in fact, I my wife's family has owned this property that I'm on right now for 30 years. And, you know, we've lived here in relative peace. Uh, there have been uh, some instances where things have happened. 
but over 30 years, I think we've come pretty much unscathed. There's a house development behind us uh, where there are million dollar homes. It's actually a gated community. Uh, they had a home invasion about uh, six months ago. So it doesn't really matter where you live. You know, in fact, I used to uh, go to yard sales and find really cool things, you know, antiques and uh, guns and all kind of military surplus stuff. I would always go to the really nice neighborhoods because I knew that's where the good stuff was. And don't think that criminals feel the same way. They're going to those nicer areas uh, for the good stuff. And with the more drug abuse that's happening and just the things that go on, those things increase, uh, but they ebb and flow. So really, you know, living here in America, crime is pretty much a way of life. It's something that you're gonna have to deal with sooner or later. No, not every day. You, don't, you have insurance on your vehicle, you have insurance on a lot of things, life insurance, uh, not because you're gonna have to use it every year or every 10 years, but sooner or later, the chances are that you're gonna need it. And that's one of the things about crime and one of the things that we've had to deal with. Now, the bad is, is that things were taken. And you know, we had to deal with that. I, I've had to deal with my car uh, without a car. I've had to deal with, you know, some of the things that were stolen out of my car, things that were stolen out of our house. Uh, it was a bad situation. It really uh, made us feel very vulnerable and it really made us uh, kind of on edge for a while. In fact, I'm still a little bit, um, you know, concerned and it's brought another height of awareness, uh, but it's definitely taken a toll and it's given us a different mindset. And so, you know, while those things are bad, I'll never forget what a good friend of mine said one time. Uh, he said, you'll never know if a day is good or bad until the end of days. And you know, guys, you could have something catastrophic happen to you that changes the course of your life. You can have something taken from you that makes you think in a different way that later on becomes one of the biggest blessings because of the action you took because of that situation. But let's look at the good. And the good, honestly, guys, far outweighs the bad. Uh, when we had our break-in last year, uh, first thing we did was we got a security system. We had only been in that house for about three months and we had been planning on getting it. We knew we needed one, especially with the business that I'm in. And so once the break-in happened, it inspired us to go ahead and get the system. We got a really good system. Uh, one of the things about FBI statistics is that if you have a house that is harder to break into, it's more visible or it has a good security system, you have dogs, uh, they will pass up and go to another house 75% of the time. Now there's still that 25%, but the more you fortify your house, the better off you're going to be. And that is a, a very critical element. Uh, one of the things too that was really good that came out of that was once I started talking about it on video, I had a lot of messages from guys and comments down below that said they left immediately watching the video. They may have been at work. They may have been somewhere. They left immediately, went home and secured their valuables. Uh, you know, that was huge. And it really made me feel good that I could help someone in that way, reminding us that break-ins do happen. Again, guys, it's a 110% chance that your home's gonna get broken into. So, you know, really taking that seriously. And listen, the hiding places that you think you have, those places they know about. Uh, one of the funny things that when I recovered my truck, I had two places uh, deep into the console that I hid my two pistols. I had one, there was a cup holder in the console that lifted out. It was a really cool little compartment in there that nobody I thought would think about it. You could see where they had been in there. Uh, there was a con also under the main console, there was a tray that pulled up deep down in there. I had another pistol. Thankfully, I had taken them both out, uh, but they had been in there. In fact, they stole a little med kit that I had left in there. Uh, so hiding things where you really think that nobody's going to look. Uh, I have a stack of t-shirts and in those t-shirts in my walk-in closet, I had a Browning High Power shoved up under there. I figured nobody would look under there. That's the first place they went. So you know, where you think you may have a hiding place, you need to think twice. It, that really helped me to consider where I secure my valuables. Uh, one of the gr big things was, as far as our break-in goes, is my wife had a large jewelry box sitting right next to our shelf rope. They went through the shelf rope, but they left the jewelry box sitting. I had told my wife over and over for the past couple of months that she needed to secure that jewelry in our safe. We have a really large gun safe, 
and she just had failed to do it. Thankfully, they passed by it. Uh, you can bet now that she has that tucked away in our safe. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there were some good things like that. Another thing is, you know, we had good insurance, so our insurance took care of us. Uh, they were good, they worked with us, and replaced, per value, everything that we had missing. Uh, and so we came out on the good end, and then I had a lot of companies uh, that knew about the break-in, that replaced the goods. In fact, Going Gear was one of them. Marshall, he sent me, uh, in fact, because it was a Maxpedition bag with a lot of cool flashlights and some knives and different things, uh, he re sent replacements for everything. Tim at Maxpedition sent me a Maxpedition uh, bag, a, a fat boy, to replace it. <clears throat> there were uh, AR-500 armor. Uh, I had a, a set of just soft armor next to my bed in case I ever had a home invasion break-in type situation. I could just throw it on. It wasn't actually even from AR-500. It was one that I had picked up at a gun show. And I told the guys there, I told Tyler, I said, it wasn't one of yours. And he said, no, no worries, I'm gonna send you another one. So he sent me one. So, and I know guys, you don't have the, the connections and things like that necessarily. But just to tell you what a blessing it was after the break-in, uh, it gave me a lot of thought. Talking about it, a lot of people changed the way they saw things. So it changed their mindset. That, that's what these videos are about, is to change your mindset, change the way you look at things. Because if you're not careful, you go 10 years, man, nothing's happened, and you get lulled. Uh, and then it's devastating when you have a break-in because you weren't really prepared, you weren't thinking about it. In the video, two is one, one is none. I gave a lot of examples about actual events where people had gotten in touch with me and talked about bags and things they had listened to and heard on the Sensible Prepper channel and on the Suits channel that actually was a huge benefit to them in a critical crisis type situation. This morning, I got a message from a guy that had looked at my intruder defense bag. This is the second time this has happened. And he said, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just put some things together. I think it'd be great just to be ready and prepared in case I have a burglary, in case we have some kind of situation. Uh, last night, he was at home, uh, late at night. In fact, it was three in the morning. He could hear some voices outside his window and he looked out and there were three men walking down the street. Uh, the men went to the house next door and started knocking on the door. He knew the couple, they were, it was an elderly couple that lived next door to him. And he started getting concerned, he started watching and he saw them start to argue. Then they started kicking the door, trying to kick it in. Uh, he immediately grabbed his bag. He said it was a satchel. He put it on, he got his gun out with his light. He went around the back of the house and came out and got him at gunpoint while the police were on their way. He held him at gunpoint. Uh, when the police got there, they thanked him for being there and for standing in the gap for him. Um, you know, this is a situation that just, I mean, that to me is why I do everything I do here. I know I do a lot of gun reviews and gear reviews and we talk about all kind of stuff. But really the heart of what I do and what really keeps me doing what I'm doing is helping people. That is why I do it. Uh, you know, if I can help one person, if I can help 20 people, and you know, sometimes there's a lot of people that watch the videos, thousands and thousands of people. If these kind of things can help them, then it's worth everything. And so, you know, Take seriously your security. Take seriously um, how you live, your around your surroundings. But really, guys, the thing is, is be a hero. Be somebody who stands in the gap. Be a sheepdog, and protect those you love. You know, our military forces. Uh, one of the mottos is, you know, to protect and to help the oppressed. Uh, you know, it's especially with special forces, helping the oppressed standing up for those. Guys, if that's the way our special forces are, shouldn't we be that way as citizens? Because we're the core. We're the core of America, doing the right thing. You know, that guy was taking a chance, stepping out, facing off three men uh, that were trying to do a break-in. He could have just sat back and let it happen, said, you know, the police can take care of that. And that little poor family could have been abused, they could have been killed, they could have been robbed. And yet he was willing to stand in the gap. You know, I'm gonna tell you something, guys. One thing that I've really come to realize lately is that as we go through life, it's not just about you being prepared, but it's about you making a difference wherever you are. Uh, whether it's driving down the road and someone cuts you off and you get all mad and you're fussing, be a, an agent of change. Be an agent of just doing the right thing. You know, 
back in the Middle Ages, the knights, they were very noble. They were very uh, chivalrous. And it was where they protected. And they had great manners. And they took care of people. And, you know, they stood up and protected them from enemies. Uh, they protected them from burglars, whatever. And these men uh, were held as, you know, great men. What we have had here in America, this country was founded on great men with high ideals, wanting to, cre to create a place uh, that we could live in peace, that we could love one another and live with one another and help one another. We may not always agree. Uh, we may definitely disagree very much, but we respected the, the right of the other person to have their say. And I think that's one of the things that we're starting to lose here in our country. Uh, we don't want to get involved. Uh, you know, we're too busy with our lives. Guys, life is short. And those things that we have, whether they're guns, gear, all this stuff, one of these days we're going to give it to our kids and they're going to probably maybe keep it, maybe get rid of it. It may end up in the trash heap. That is not what it's about. It's all about protecting the ones you love, loving the ones that you have under your care, and being a good neighbor to all those around us. Listen. A good friend of mine and a mentor told me one time, he said, if my neighbor's prepared, then I'm better prepared. And, you know, it's really important for all of us together to be an agent of change and to stand in the gap. Uh, the guy that sent me the message this morning, I want to say thank you for standing in the gap. He's a young man of about 23. Uh, he did the right thing. And guys, those guys that are overseas right now that are uh, you know, our armed forces are protecting innocent civilians from these terrorists uh, or that are ready to do so. They're standing in the gap. Here at home, we've got to be willing to do the same. Protect the innocent. Protect those that are oppressed. Stand against those who would oppress. And let's make our world a better place. Guys, we want to make change. We want to preserve freedom. We want to preserve what we have here, but yet are we not willing to do what we need to do as American citizens and be the agent of change? And because of that, you need to be strong. You need to be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. So I'm living proof that when seconds count, the deputy sheriff is only 35 minutes away. Guys, we want to stand for freedom. We want to stand for America. We want to stand for our values. But if we're not willing to do that in our own personal lives, what good is it? And for that reason, you need to be strong.